for joining me today. It's such an honor and a pleasure to be here with all of you. Let me begin today's discussion with a short quiz. I will show you a series of pictures of distinguished personalities and you tell me what comes to mind when you take a look at them. Tell me what words do you associate with them. All right, so let's get started. First one, Nelson Mandela. Courage. Anyone? Courage. Africa. Africa. <laughs> Oprah Winfrey. Loud. Loud. Do I miss something here? Rich. Talk show. Rich. Talk, talk show. show. Talk show. <laughs> loud. Rich. Influence. <laughs> Influence. Yes. Steve Jobs. Smart. 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 In a way. Powerful. Powerful. Apple. 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 Angel. <laughs> 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 That's correct. Well, now let's think about this for a second. The people that we just saw on screen are extremely different individuals from each other, and yet there is something which is common to them. What is it about them that made them stand out and leave a mark on us? Doesn't matter what words you use to associate with them, we still use these words because they left an impression. What is it about them that gave them this charisma, this presence, and most importantly, what is it about them that held them to influence, inspire, and impact millions of people across cultures across the world. I have been asking the exact same questions for the last 10 years of my life. And through my studies and stories and research and everything, I've come to a conclusion. A conclusion that these leaders have three things in common. It is the three things that they do. What are they? First, is they created a unique identity for themselves. They stood out from everybody. How? By being themselves, beautifully and boldly and unapologetically. They identified what they want to stand for. Innovation, talk show, media, struggle, freedom, whatever that was, they identified it. And they were not afraid to live their truth and speak their truth. They were not focused on being different, but they were focused on being themselves. And that's what made them different. The second thing that they did was to connect to connect with people at the deepest and the most genuine level through their words, behavior, body language, presence, warmth, everything. They focus on connecting because they know that people don't really care how much you know until they know how much you care. And finally, they communicated. They communicated their brand, who they are, what they stand for in a way which is simple and yet profound. They did not communicate to make impression. They did not communicate to impress, but they communicated to impact. And so it is this combination of these three elements that they did repeatedly over and over again and consistently, which gave them a powerful magnetic personal brand. And we all know for a fact that whether I'm in accounting or advertising, whether I'm in law or luxury, we all want to have that unique space. We all want to connect with people. We all want to communicate our truth. And that is my mission for today. My mission for today is that in the next 15, 20 minutes, I want to get us started on this personal branding journey. I want to empower us with tools that we can start applying the minute we walk out of this door to the networking cocktail waiting for us. So how do we start? Where do we start? We start with the first element, create. How do we create that unique identity? Now the answer is simple, but not easy. It starts by putting ourselves under this big lens of taking a brand audit. I need to take a 360 degree brand audit of me. It's not brand assessment. It's not identifying whether I'm an introvert or an extrovert, et cetera, et cetera. It's really about identifying what are my values? What, are my, what do I like? What am I passionate about? What gets me bad out of morning? What gets me out of bed every morning? What do I like? What do I don't like? Where am I weird? What are my blind spots? Everything. It is the unique combination of all these different elements that is what is going to give me a unique identity. Richard Branson, again a powerful <coughs> friend, but his introduction is that I'm a tie loathing adventurer. So he just didn't. He just doesn't come across and say, "Oh, I own this virgin." Blah blah blah. I do that. But he doesn't like ties. 
Ariana Huffington, the CEO of Huffington Post, a big multi-million dollar media company. She, as, along with being a CEO, she has promoted and communicated to the world that she also is a sleep evangelist. She gets her team to sleep more. Wow, I would love to work with that company. <laughs> <laughs> she says that I don't like heels. I can't wear heels to save my life. These are the things that makes them different leaders and unique leaders. I don't really have to say all the impressive things about me to really make a connection and stand out. So let's let's take a sample today. We all have, have you got these colorful key cards? If you could all write in your notebooks a few words that you associate, could pass them down, a few words anywhere from one to five that you, if you could write in your notebook for these cards, words that you associate with your brand. What do you think about yourself? What do you think your brand is? Anywhere from one to five words. Anywhere from one to five words. How would you want people to associate, to, to what would you want them to associate with you? When you leave the room, what would you like them to think about you? 30 seconds, time starts now. Or difficult was it? Was it difficult? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of knots. Now think about this. Isn't it paradoxical, isn't it ironical that it's difficult for us to describe ourselves? We've only spent our entire lifetime with ourselves, isn't it? <laughs> and yet it's not an easy thing to do. Because it's tough. It's tough to put ourselves under the lens. And that's really the first step of personal branding. It's not promoting myself. It's not online media or it's not what Google says about me, although that is part of it but it really starts here. Each one of us can build a unique and powerful brand, provided we know what are our powers. Now this is the fourth step. Once you have more time and once you have identified your brand words, go to your brand auditors, people who know you well, people who you trust, and ask them, if I think my brand is inspiring coach, for example, now I need to go to Nick. Nick, do you think that about me? Jeannie, do you think that about me? If not, then that's where I need to start working. And that is the first step of our personal branding. Let's move on to the second step, that is connect. What is my most important goal when I walk into a networking room or a client meeting or a stakeholder meeting? I wanna connect with people. So today I wanna to give you three tools which will help us connect and exude charisma and presence. The first one, principle of emotional contagion. What it means is that our moods, our energies, and our emotions are contagious. So if I enter a room feeling positive and fantastic, I'm likely to pass on that emotion to you. And you will also feel positive and fantastic. And you will associate these words with my brand. It happens because of the mirror neurons in our brain. That is what makes us laugh and cry in movies. Because we associate, we relate. So how does it apply to us? The next time we enter a room where you want to make a connection, start with a bang, start with a positive comment. It's, it's a fantastic conference, what a brilliant view outside your office, what an interesting project. Avoid words like, oh I had such bad traffic on the way, or it's such a bad weather outside. I'm not asking us to say that, oh it's a beautiful day if it's been rainy and cloudy all day. <laughs> but what I'm really asking us to do is find one thing positive and say it aloud because that makes the other person feel more positive and relaxed, and that's what makes connection. One study found that when hotel waiters were, when hotel waiters gave a positive comment in the morning to their guests, like, you know, it's a, pos it's a very good weather outside, it was found that their tips increased by 27%. So use that the next time when you're going to an event, start with one positive thing. The other thing, Confidence. We always, we always associate confidence with people with presence and power, right? So today I want, to, I want us to discuss <laughs> how can we feel more confident and appear more confident. Could I ask us, all of us to stand up from our chairs? Okay, now consider a scenario where you have all the powers in the world and 
nothing can stop you from winning the world today. So stand in your most confident selves. How would you stand? <laughs> okay. Now, observe your body language for a second, as I observe. The minute I said these words, all of us pulled our shoulders apart, stood taller, took more space on the ground, because we expanded ourselves. That's what we do, that's what our brains do, because of the flight or fight response. When we are feeling more confident, I'm like, okay, come on, I can, I can fight to you, or I can talk to you. That's how our brains function. Now, we, there is this, how can we apply this research to all of us? I'm going to ask you to stand like this, like a superwoman or a superman. <laughs> Thank you for participating with me. In one research done by Professor Amy Curry, um, who is um, at Harvard Business School, please sit down, by the way. Oh, okay. <laughs> at, we'll, um, we'll continue standing. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I promise you, you'll much more confident when you leave the room. <laughs> so this research done by Amy Curry, um, in her lab, she invited people and she asked them to stand in a power position and she found that we, when people did that and when they looked themselves in the mirror, their stress hormone, cortisol, came down and their testosterone hormone, which makes us feel more confident, went up. Scientifically proven numbers. So, next time when you want to enter an important client pitch, an, an event where you don't really want to be, a negotiation where you don't want to have, etc., etc., find a private corner, look yourself in the mirror, and stand in a power pose for two minutes. I promise you, it will make you feel more comfortable and confident. If nothing else, it will at least make you smile. And smiling <laughs> makes us feel more confident. So now we move on to the final tool. How do we create an impact through our tone, pace, and pitch? First step, pay attention to how many times do you nod in a conversation. Some of us have this habit of nodding quite often because we want to make sure that we want to show that we are listening to you, we are acknowledging what you are saying. But nodding a lot reduces our impact. So what we need to do is to nod once or twice with meaningful eye contact and that's enough. The second thing that we need to do is watch our pitch. When we get excited, we use a higher pitch. Now how that affects is that, I want to say, I'm sorry, but I cannot negotiate this any further. It sounds like a question. It sounds as, as if I'm asking whether I can negotiate. I'm sorry, I cannot negotiate this any further. It's a flat tone. So watch your inflection. Do I have the habit of, of, of asserting as if I'm asking? We need to watch that. Mm. And one final thing we need to watch out for is our voice. Using a deeper voice. Politicians, a number of them, have used voice coaching to sound more powerful. They use a deeper voice. I want to show you one example. Mm -hmm. busy, but we haven't had really uh, much time to think about it. Can you take a look at the screens? So, yeah. so, so this is happy. Margaret Thatcher before but voice I'm coaching. I'm very much aware of the responsibilities. And a little bit apprehensive, who would it be? When you think of the names that I follow. Let me answer that. This is after what's going on. Deeply. Because I feel very strongly about it. The greatest divisions this nation has ever seen. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Nodding less, deeply. Not asking, how would you feel? She said, I feel deeply. And that's what we need to do now. Does it apply to business or only politicians? To answer this question, two professors from Duke University and University of California, they conducted a research with 792 CEOs. And they found that when the voice pitch was lowered by 22.1 hertz, their annual compensation went up by $187,000. Now, who could have thought, who could have thought that using a deeper voice can have an effect on our paycheck? So this is what I'm talking about. These little tweaks can help us make a bigger impact, connect better. And so finally, moving on to the final element, communicate. How do I communicate my brand to the world in a meaningful and memorable manner? So let's take a look at this three-step process. The first one is to interact. Ask a question. The best way to give an elevator pitch is to not give it at all. What I really need to do is to form a connection. I need to 
For example, let's say if I want to say, oh, I am the, uh, let's say I want to introduce myself to somebody, rather than saying, I'm the founder and director of Alchemy Consulting, and I do, 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 it sounds boring, really. And, and it doesn't sound memorable at all. On the contrary, I could ask Crystal. Crystal, have you heard about the science of people? But when was the last time you read that how we can connect with better and communicate with clients in a much better way? That's what I do in my day job. I help people connect and communicate better with people. It's all about interacting, asking a question, giving them an opportunity to speak first. If I'm the director of forensic accounting at ABC Consulting Firm, rather than playing hi, I'm the director of forensic accounting, ask, have you heard about frauds? Ha did you hear about this big scam that happened with this company? I help my clients investigate such frauds with the help of numbers. Now, that's when you've made it memorable. That's when you've made it meaningful. Until then, it's just a bunch of titles. And we are more than our title. So this other thing to remember is to intrigue. If I have a couple of minutes at a networking event, I don't want to launch into a full-blown audio advertisement of myself. The best way to intrigue is to give only one or two lines and remove jargon. Not our post, not the company that we are representing. Well, we can include that, but not before we have included our brand words. I'm a coach who's also an entrepreneur, who's also a writer, who's also a vegetarian food blogger, who's also a dancer. That's what makes me me. That's what makes me unique from other coaches and other dancers and other chefs, whatever that is. If I'm a partner at the law firm, I'm a partner at so and so law firm, who loves adventure sports, by the way. Now I have made it intriguing. Now I have made an impact because that will get the other person to ask a question. Oh, what sort of adventure sports do you like? That what continues the conversation into a meaningful conversation, rather than, oh, how long have you been in Hong Kong? So that is what I'm trying to say. Intrigue the other person. And finally, impact. We have been talking about impact, and we have been talking about connecting with people. And we stress so much about our elevator pitch. What can I say to impress them in the first few seconds? What can I say to get this deal? But that's not what it's all about. It's only a conversation starter. It's like this tasting note, which you see on the bottle of champagne enough to intrigue you, but not telling you everything about the drink inside. So impact. How can I impact? By using my body language, by really being present, by listening and smiling and making an eye contact. We always thought smiling makes us look more kind and nice and warm and approachable. Is that correct? There is another study which says that smiling, or at least 7 to 14 seconds, I think that's what it is, um, also makes us look more intelligent. So including a smile in our conversation is not only going to make us look more approachable, but also intelligent, so why not use it? Because at the end of the day, it's connection that I want with people. And that is my personal brand slogan. So with that, I come to the conclusion of our journey together today. But our work has just stopped because crystal branding is a lifelong journey. And there are hundreds of other tools and techniques we can talk about. I wish we had more time. Mm -hmm. However, we need to take one of this. What am I going to do over the next 24 hours? Coming to that one step. Because the secret to getting ahead is to get started, right? So let's take 10 seconds, 20 seconds, to write down in, on your papers, what is it that I commit to? It could be anything that we talked about today, not just in this room, any room. I don't mind. So I, even if you don't remember me, I want you to remember what we talked about. Because that is what is going to get us started on the personal branding journey. So, okay, time starts now. I want us to write down. Because that is what will make this session powerful and impactful. And not just, oh, I had a great day today, and then forget all the motivation after one week. Thank you. So with that, I really come to the conclusion 
final conclusion, if I may say so, and just want to remind us one thing. Personal branding is really not all about us. It is what makes us us. It is not just about talking about my achievements, but also my failures in equal amounts. Because at the end of the day, it's connecting with people. And remember what Maya Angelou said about people. People will forget what you say. People will forget what you do. But people will never forget how you make them feel. And that's what you want to do. Thank you, and all the best. As an observation, I think I think it's quite interesting the your point about the elevator pitch, and I think we, we're constantly, um, you know, we've been told that you know you've, you've got to be articulate and you've got to say not change your own. Like, I'm a lawyer, but actually I, this is how I help people. It's not what you do; it's how you help. Mm -hmm. But I really like the way you've turned it on its head and actually to sort of ask, you know, what is it that you know what are your issues, and then actually providing a solution. I, I think that's a nice. Uh, it's a softer way of doing it, actually. It's a good Thank way. you. There is a research which actually backs this principle. Um, in a study, it was found that if I give you the opportunity to speak first, psychologists say that it builds instant trust connection. Because in this world, we are, everybody is trying to give out information. And I've just given my power of giving out information to you. So it is very powerful. Letting others speak first is very powerful. And, and I hope that in this day ahead and in the months to come and in the years to come, we all will be able to create this powerful brand for our own selves. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.